Well, boys, looks like you started the fun without me. You're all sick. Every last one of you. We're going to need a bigger gun. What's the matter? You scared of things that go boom, boom, boom? My name is Eric. I'm joined today by, I'm not going to say joined today. I'm going to say I'm also dragging with me <laughs> through today's episode, Michael Kester. I am not without fault in the, in the drudging, the drudgery, because after all, they were eating you, but then they were bound to eat me. So we have Toxic Avenger, but we also have Troll 2 yes. on today's episode of Double Feature. <laughs> Now, I think we promised people back during the happening. Yes. And that other room that, I mean, really, the happening is the ultimate evil in film. Yeah. It's so true. there's no point in even, it, the room was the other movie. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as the happening. Nothing is ever as bad as the happening. Uh, because the happening is fucking offensive. <laughs> but we promised people, or I did, or maybe we didn't, that uh, we were done giving them bad films. Yeah. Because double feature counterintuitively uh-huh. it's not about bad films it's not about bad films despite the fact that most people think we're doing bad films every other week, all the time uh we love the films we and do. uh and uh, this week we have troll 2 which at the very least i'm not going to say anything about toxic adventure because uh-huh. there's some fucking soul in that movie uh-huh. and maybe there isn't okay. troll 2 as well i'm really glad that you felt i was i was nervous about your uh your, oh it'll be fine your, your toxic abs- love it'll be absolutely his name is toxi i mean <laughs> we'll get to that stuff but uh we're making people watch a movie that a lot of people consider this the worst movie of the all time best worst movie of all time our audience won't consider the people who call this the best worst movie of all time I guess the word best is what yep. makes it different from everything in, let's say, the Amityville Horror series. Yes, that's true. So we're going to spoil both of these movies. <laughs> and uh, my intention here, I think both of our intention was you wanted to put Toxic Avenger on the show. Yeah, I really did. And ultimately, we could never find anything that would help the movie out. Mm-hmm. So we decided to put Troll 2 on the show. Yep. I think, in effect, we may have helped Troll 2 a bit as yeah, well. I think, I, no, I, I think that we ended up with a, with a remarkably good double feature. Um, but I, I love when we accidentally do our job well. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. You could use the chapters to skip into the movies. I just want to start talking about the movies. All right. I don't even give a shit. Don't <laughs> use chapters. You don't give a fuck about these movies. So here's the thing with Toxic Avenger. Uh-huh. Is, uh, I like Slither quite yes. a bit. And I very much enjoy James Gunn. Uh huh. Um, and I wanted to learn more about trauma. So the dilemma is, as we've talked about a bit with uh, Dead Alive, Brain Dead, sure. the um, uh, Peter, Peter Jackson. Jackson stuff. I don't like the gross stuff. Uh huh. It's just not my aesthetic, and I don't know. It's not that it makes me squeamish, right? You know, I joked on the last show about not throwing up or sure. whatever. Well, Dead Alive and very much most of Troma is the gore equivalent of bathroom humor. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Bathroom humor does nothing for me. And, uh, and gore does a lot for me. Yeah. But there is this section of film we are clearly ignoring that's very near to these other movies we're talking sure. about. And that is Troma. Yeah. And so I felt the need to put this on the show. Mm-hmm. I'm forcing myself to learn more about it, <laughs> even if I will never watch a trauma movie in my free time. This is the best one to watch. Or maybe never even watch yeah. another trauma movie, even even for double feature. Mm-hmm. I it, It's just got to... It's kind of like Asylum. Maybe we should just put Asylum in this show and yeah. then we won't have to talk about it. If you go to uh, you know a Redbox, which is the only okay place to rent movies these days... They're outside your local gas station. You uh-huh. feed the machine a dollar and you get a movie for a day. Totally fine. Great business idea. And they have these asylum movies, which, you know, are like Titanic 2, which yeah. I believe was an idea you came up with. Well, I, I actually came up with this idea for a film called Revenge of the Titanic. Ah, and so that could still happen. Totally could still happen. Yes. So anyways, they make these movies that seem to get transmorphers, right? Uh-huh. They capitalize yeah. on other people's releases. Right. And, uh, and they have a lot of heart. These guys are making money, but they just like fucking making movies. That's, right. it, this isn't a get rich quick scheme. This is, Hey, we could have fun making bullshit movies that people will see by accident yeah. through, you know, through Redbox. And so that there, bam, just checked off asylum Perfect. on the things double feature needs to cover one day list. Perfect. That's about as much as we probably need to do on that. 
Yeah. But trauma's on there too. Well, the other the thing that I think you might be forgetting, Mr. Mm. Eric Ingram, is that we have actually already covered a trauma film on Double Feature. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. What trauma film? Lolly Love is a trauma film. We never actually featured that on Double Feature. Really? Yeah. Can you believe that? Oh, my God. No, what happened see, there? Here's, here's what you're thinking. We talked about Lolly Love during Slither. We That's have never actually placed Damn. Lolly Love on Double I had Feature. totally just figured that Lolly Love had been... You don't um, even remember what's on our fucking we're show. We're four years in. <laughs> I'd like to point out, if you go to doublefeatureshow.com, there is a list of every movie we've ever done. From A to Z. So you could do a little Command F and uh, see Lally if Love. there's any Lolly Love on there. Okay. Well, Which, then, at least, fact, at least Lolly Love, at least this isn't the first trauma film you've seen. That's certainly true. Because yeah. you've seen Lolly Love. So you instead would want to use the search function to see if we have referenced Lolly Love. Right. In a, did I mention I revised the website? You know, I think you mentioned that last week. Anyways, trauma. So trauma is this thing that happened in the late 80s. It was born out of the Toxic Avenger. You cannot talk trauma. Without talking Lloyd Kaufman. And furthermore, you cannot talk trauma without seeing Lloyd Kaufman. <laughs> I don't even know who Lloyd Kaufman is, and I fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah. So this is the only thing we've watched on DVD literally all year. So right? far, yeah. Everything's been digital. And by the way, almost everything's been in high definition. Yeah. A great year for double feature. Uh, that doesn't matter to you guys at all. You right. don't give a shit. But for us, that makes watching the movies really fucking sure. spectacular. However, uh, Toxic Avenger, because no one cares about it, and I can't no, that's not true. buy or it's rent that it. nobody it's, cares it, about making it look good. <laughs> well, okay, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. The best possible copy we could find was the DVD. You had. My DVD copy. So we pop in this DVD. And it's and, in TV dinner. Right, great. TV Three dinner. by four. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the first thing we get. Well, actually, yeah, the first thing you get is... This weird little <laughs> Lloyd Kaufman on the street with people dancing behind him, sure. explaining how there's different channels on the DVD so different that you can look at the features. <laughs> Great. This guy is so, he's just a zany, weird old guy. <laughs> he's totally out of touch with what, D he's out of touch with technology. He right. knows film kind of. He doesn't understand DVDs. He's aware that he has made some films. Sure. I mean, he was in Hatchet 2. We've already seen him this year. Yeah. He, there's a Lloyd Kaufman cameo in Hatchet 2. He's aware of, of cinema. Good. So we got one of our Hatchet 2 references right. correct yeah. this episode. We'll get to that. Yeah. I, Whoops. Yes. So the thing is, is in all of these trauma films, every trauma DVD, there is some Lloyd Kaufman interview. I watched God. this one called Killer Nerd. Uh -huh. Killer Nerd's a trauma film? Killer Nerd is a trauma film, followed by Bride of Killer Nerd. Of course, why wouldn't you? And the intro to that is Lloyd Kaufman interviewing like a secretary, I guess, and he ends up making her take her clothes off. Great. And having her run in place, and then she ends up feeling like she's being objectified, and so he takes his clothes off. If, I love Lloyd so Kaufman. If it <laughs> hasn't been made clear already, Lloyd Kaufman is all about pushing the envelope and having ridiculously immature fun. The guy comes out uh, on this DVD to introduce... First of all, he calls him Toxie. Toxie. I noticed you call him Toxie as well. It's, it's an affectionate name. <laughs> no one in the movie calls him Toxie. It's, it's you and Lloyd. The fourth film is called Citizen Toxie. I'm not saying it's outside the canon, sir. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare challenge you of that. I'm simply stating that uh, he feel this is his fucking baby. It man. is. It He's really so is. He's so proud and it's adorable. <laughs> How could you not feel for this guy? How could right? you not want to support everything? He's exactly. Into? He's so excited. You have to be excited for him. And it's all downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, so we start in Tromaville. Tromaville. Which I guess is where trauma comes from or vice versa. It, you know, I think it's the, I think Tromaville was named after the production company. Let me put this out to you. Okay. Uh, you get this wager, right? Mm -hmm. If you put on your pink, I'll take off mine. Uh -huh. Do you take that wager? Oh, you always, you always take that wager. I think you have to go for that, right? You know, every time I see that scene, and call me depraved, call me Larry, call me the Sultan of Twat. I will not call you any of those <laughs> things. What I always think... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> what I always think she's going to say is you put on your pink and I'll show you mine. 
Oh, that would be better. Wouldn't that be such a great yeah, line? Yeah, but you can't show pink in this movie. It's I don't all know. about tits. It's I don't just know tits. what's off limits in... <laughs> that's that's where you draw the line. Yeah, I it guess. It has to be a PG-13 nudity. Yeah, because NC you, you point a shotgun functions. at a baby. Right. You kill a seeing eye dog. Sure. You cornhole a blind chick. <laughs> okay. You put a midget in a dryer. I mean, what is sacred <laughs> to this film? I think the whole film is about pushing buttons. Pussy, man, that's what's sacred. That is, that's where the line You're is drawn. Putting it on a pedestal, man. The vertical line has been drawn. <laughs> Look what this film has done to us. It's turned us into little thirteen-year-old boys. I know. I think that's what trauma is about. I think trauma is about captivating the the immature... thirteen-year-old that isn't inside you. Right. Well, I, honestly, I'm ashamed when I watch <laughs> sure. trauma films because I always kind. It's. I know we've been talking about train wrecks all year. Yeah. But I just want to watch this horrible thing unfold because it's so silly and so goofy. I recently watched Poultry Geist, which Ah, is one of the newer. The last one that I would probably go through. It's it's one of the newer trauma masterpieces. And I'm watching it thinking that it's awful because it is. It's so fucking bad. But then Lloyd Kaufman like shows up in a chicken suit and like shakes his ass at the camera. Sure, sure. And I'm immediately like, I'm finishing the film. Yeah, you have to. I'm going to watch the whole thing. <laughs> right. And that toxic... You don't want to disappoint Lloyd is yeah, really right. what it is. Poor Lloyd. And Toxic Avenger runs over a little kid's head in the first, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. You yeah. can't get off the boat. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, you're stuck at that point. You know, uh, let me take it into familiar territory. Sure. Let's talk about tactics in this oh, film. Oh, Okay. Um, the film takes 10 minutes for the score to stop <laughs> for the music. It's not a score. It's a soundtrack. It's a soundtrack. It's a soundtrack of what I assume is fake or free to use. Yeah. Uh, crappy pop knockoffs yep. from the eighties. And even when it stops, it only stops for a second. Right. I think that the music is probably there because it reappears and it goes on for the rest yeah, of the movie. It does. It's just song after song. It's uh-huh. an hour and a half. It's behind every scene. It's got to be there to help hide the shitty audio. Oh, that's, that's why definitely you do it, right? the case. Do you know what we could get away with on this show if we had background sound? If we had some kind of soundtrack in the back, we could fucking record on our phones. Yeah. We could go outside and record. Yeah. No one would have any idea. I could snip the middle of sentences and yeah. fling shit around sure. in the timeline. None of it. No one would know because well, you have music <laughs> in the background. Well, and a good 50% of this film is bad dubbing Foley and voiceover. Oh, my God. Um, Earlier on, before Melvin becomes the toxic Avenger, yes, all of his little goofy sound effects, his his Warner Brothers esque, right, weirdo his cartoon yeah. cartoon sounds, yeah, they're all fake. They're all added in later. They don't match up with anything his face is doing. A lot of times, people's mouths are moving, and there's no words coming out. I think there should be a coordinator of wheezing credit in the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, between the you know him as that character and him as the toxic avenger right there is an awful lot of breathing and wheezing effects that needed to be added sure it's like antonio banderas walking around in spurs in desperado right. somebody exactly. has to just sit there and clang the spur yeah. over and over for two yeah. hours i was gonna say that also reminds me my my uh question about pink uh what i was getting to was the tutu yeah. That you may be forced to wear for the rest of your existence. The rest, that's true. For answering that question. I suppose wrong. I never consider that I'm going to have to live with any decision for the rest of my life. And why should you? So imagine this movie without the soundtrack yeah. in the background. That's when it becomes awkward bad. <laughs> that's true. Like, um, you know, it's already kind of unwatchable <laughs> right. bad, but you know what I mean. It's yeah. really, I, yeah. it's pushing it, against you with every right. scene Well, bad. it becomes, it immediately seems like they don't know that it's kind sure. of not very good it becomes a uh, porno story yeah at that point yeah it's the, it, i don't have any money to pay for this pizza uh-huh. that's the entire movie right. would be that scene it becomes i like popcorn well let's heat it up caliber <laughs> right. of yeah somewhere of around a film. There. somewhere around there it's a lot easier to accept that kind of crappy dubbing when it's for the entire movie right you know we don't even really mention dubbing anymore because uh-huh. now it just seems to pop up all over the sure. fucking place but uh, in this movie, it's selective. Mm-hmm. It's not an entire crew of, I don't know, Italian people who don't speak English or whatever. Instead, it's just one guy who happens to be your main character uh-huh. whose voice is dubbed in. You know, it's one of those things you could tell in the sound booth, trying to sound smooth, trying to sound like the hero. Right. When you're on set, 
you're freaking out, having a good time. Well, you're you reacting con- more directly to what's sure. going on. Sure, you're excited. You can't control what the fuck you sound like. <laughs> And uh, and that sounds really, really weird. It's somewhere buried between Bruce Campbell and Shaft. Yeah. This sort of yeah, that's smooth perfect. talking, toxic Avenger, yeah. tutu wearing. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Oh, who the fuck is this character? <laughs> and then also the growls, the grunts yeah. don't match the voice nope, at all. <laughs> Probably not even the same guy making no way. the sound effects. Done afterward. Yeah. It's an and if it is the same guy, shame on him. No. <laughs> Doesn't care at all. Somebody at some point should say, don't these things have to match up? Other than that, though, I'm actually a little surprised by yeah. the production values of this movie. Um, I don't know why I'm expecting such low production values, but you know, you get the the scene where he's running away uh, on fire in slow yeah. motion. That's actually one of the coolest looking scenes, right? In the movie, and for sure. and something that seems like it at least takes a professional to pull off. Yeah, the people making this movie seem to work in or around the industry. Yeah. They all seem to be like they banded together because they couldn't get work. They weren't quite good enough to be in actual films. Right. So the main characters are the extras and the extras are people's friends. And they actually have a guy who's worn a fire suit before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have cameras that can do slow motion and they use them whether they need to or not. Yep. You know, there's a scene where he's riding on the car. There's that explosion. Sure. There are some things in here that are pretty legitimate action moments. Absolutely. And then you also have the guy carrying around a mop cleaning up the streets. Yeah, so he, sometimes that happens. He's certainly cleaning up the streets. And it's it's weird because the slow motion and the cleaning up the streets are two things that you wouldn't naturally put in the slasher genre. No, right. But if you remove those and make Toxie a bad guy, all this is is a slasher superhero. I think it's probably the fact he has a girlfriend. Yeah, that's true. That's what it is. It's it's that because he does all of the slasher stuff. Right. He shows up. He's faster than you. He comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and just appears. He knows you're wrong. Or and he in, steals things from Halloween, which right. is the staple yeah. of every slasher film. Exactly. Just take things out of Halloween and put them in your movie instead. And the kills are always painstakingly thought out, planned, sure. and graphic. Sure, yeah. I feel like we're getting a mixture of things from Freddy Krueger and Sleepaway yep. Camp, and there's definitely a lot of moments that are taken there's from There's a little Herschel series. Gordon Lewis. Yeah, I could, yeah, I could feel some of that. I think that's probably the budget kicking in there. Oh, we should also, we should also uh, tag our third head crush so far this year. Yeah, Jesus, fuck. Those are not stopping. <laughs> I like that on your DVD cover. Yeah. It mentions that this does, in fact, include the infamous head crushing the scene. The full head crushing scene. The full head, right. And in case you were afraid <laughs> that they would leave part of it out, I'm not even sure which of the. There's basically two head crushing scenes in yeah, here. Yeah, there right? are. There's, a, so there's the, a ridiculously graphic one and a ridiculously obscene one. So there's, uh, there's three films with head crushes on Double Feature this year, mm-hmm. four head crushes total. That's a new list we're going to have to make on that website. The ending of this movie also gives us a chance to talk about something we've never really discussed before, Uh which is if you don't know how to end your movie, (laughs) there are maybe three surefire endings that you can definitely use. Uh, The first uh, on my mind is that you can create a sort of um, wherever there is injustice, I will be there. uh, Sure. of Wrath montage. The the end of the spirit. The end of the Punisher as well. Uh, so that's that's one way you can definitely end your superhero esque film. That does not work for all films, though. All of these endings, however, work for this film. <laughs> Second one you can do is ending it with voiceover. Now, voiceover naturally lends itself to the the previous mentioned scene, but you can also have a voiceover summarizing what sure. has happened in your movie. The crow, yeah, the uh, the lessons to be learned, the moral of the story, that sort of thing. The third ending that will always work time and time again. <laughs> we just saw it on Happy Go Lucky. Uh-huh. Um, it's all over the fucking place. The crane shot. Yeah. All you have to do is slowly zoom out. It does not yeah. matter what your characters the are The tried doing. and true Muppet movie ending. Yeah, you, you can't fail. You just go further. You slowly back out of the movie. <laughs> That's really a failure of an ending. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of just like you're... A, uncomfortable being there at that (laughs) point so you're just smiling and slowly moving toward the door (laughs) right right and the crane goes up and further away and up and further away and uh then the movie's over right and so this this uh film not wanting to be outdone ever or perhaps not thinking it can feel like it has enough of an ending it performs all three of these yes it does kind of at once (laughs) but it doesn't stop there no it doesn't stop there 
so trauma okay so at at risk of upsetting people more we've already put them through these two films but very similar to the final fantasy series interesting <laughs> can't wait to see how the sentence is gonna end trauma released the toxic avenger as a last hurrah we have no more money this is our shot all right it did so well that they were then able to start producing tons and tons of other movies. <laughs> Love it. So, obviously, if your cash cow is about a superhero, mm-hmm. I mean, even in by today's modern cinema standards, right. you can't stop there. No. You have to bring the superhero back. You, you have, have to, to milk the cash cow. Yeah, right? you milk the cash cow. <laughs> yeah, but it's so green need... milk because it's... That's gross. Next movie. You need uh, sequels. You, you need, need a lot of sequels. Um, you need action figures. You, you need Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> I mean, these things are all. Uh, you could you could buy a Toxic Avenger blankie, right? Yeah, you I mean, really can. Once they realized they had a cash cow on their hands, <laughs> I think uh, I think they probably got just about everything. Yeah, out of that I had could. a Toxic Avenger lunchbox when I was wow, young. Wow, look Didn't at you! Didn't know what the Toxic Avenger was. <laughs> No idea. <laughs> That's when, how you really know you've succeeded. When I was about six or seven, I realized it was a mop and not Donatello's stick. Nice. Really frustrated with that. Wow. Totally fooled. Not the first time today. Um, <laughs> what you're telling me is uh, it's as if they deceptively marketed this to you based on a previous franchise they weren't even tangentially connected to. Yeah, they just kind of... I wanted a lunchbox. I wanted to see the sequel to a film and... They called it fucking Troll 2. I can't even be cheeky with you. Failure. This I'm is sorry. just failure. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I uh, felt so embarrassed okay. sitting here All watching right. the film. Let's talk about Troll 2 okay. for a second here. Well, actually, why don't we not talk about Troll 2? <laughs> Can we, before talking about Troll 2, talk about John Carl Buchler, who has nothing to do <laughs> with Troll 2? No, not in the least. So, John Carl Buchler, who I mentioned when we did Hatchet 2... Sure. And mentioned last week at the end of the show as having something to do with this film, only directed Troll. Right. Which I have seen. Okay. I've seen Troll. And I just had heard Troll 2, worst, best worst film of all time, something we need to cover on the show. John Carl Buchler, we sure. know he's a dude. Let's do Troll 2 on the show. <laughs> we know he's a dude. That's the criteria. There you go. So you're excited to bring this movie to the show because yeah. you're thinking, hey, there's some ties to Hatchet. We can right. talk about that. Maybe it'll be the crappiest movie ever with a great makeup job. Yeah, or something that, that, that was honestly, that was just about what I was thinking. Okay, so there's two reasons you don't need to worry about this. <laughs> One is I, it's several episodes ago now, and I don't even remember what you said. Okay. It's possible you said it in such a way like, hey, that guy from the troll movies uh-huh. or, or something like that. Also possible that I just edited all of that out. If there's a reference I don't understand, if there's anything I think is in unclear territory, if I ask the producer to check something and she never gets back to me, snip and toss, all that stuff, all right. snip and toss. Fair enough. Just trying to avoid setting up more Gmail filters at this point. But the, the second thing is that we both willingly, for probably the first time ever, completely fell victim to something that we really didn't need to, even yeah. a minor bit of checking. A, yeah. a simple Google search, in right. fact, right. would have shown that Troll 2, not related to Troll not at, at all. all. In fact, not even a little bit. Not supposed to be called Troll 2. But furthermore, has no fucking trolls <laughs> in the movie. Right. It, normally, I wouldn't nitpick a point like goblins versus trolls. Sure. I don't give that much of a fuck. I uh-huh. really don't. But the movie really goes out of its way to say, hey, goblins, look at goblins. these goblins, backwards and forwards. Right. These are, in fact, goblins. Hey, did you hear about trolls? Not in our movie, you didn't, because these are fucking <laughs> goblins. But what, so, so, and it's interesting that you point that out, because the thing about, do we call it goblins or do we still call it troll 2? Fuck that, it's troll 2. So the thing about troll 2 is that they go out of their way, painstakingly, to tell you that your foe is goblins. Right. They don't tell you fucking shit about <laughs> goblins. No, they, they tell don't. you your foe is goblins and that only dead grandpa can stop them. <laughs> Before we get into double feature where we tear stuff apart because we hate that double feature. Yeah. I want to point out that we, we're going to give this film a hard time. Yeah. 
and it's in the most loving we enjoy sure. the fuck out of it sure. way certainly because i will i will watch this film again i will show it to friends i think it's absolutely something that cinema needs to have yeah but i think that in needing to have it we need to give it a hard time it's sure. like it's like oh, a good of friend of course well and i mean here's the thing about that is we have drugged people through the worst of the worst possible movies of sure. the worst possible franchises <laughs> of all time. And uh, that's not something we commonly do, but in covering all of our franchises, we've dedicated ourselves to doing 12, 13, 14 times. We just needed to cover these awful movies, yeah. and we've been very frank about them. So when people say this is a so bad it's good movie, or the best worst movie yeah. ever, I mean, we have certainly seen far yeah. worse things. This if, is the more enjoyable yeah, of some of the sure. stupider mm -hmm. series. Best had, worst movie of all time? Contestable. But better than Lamp movie. Oh, and that's really the bar. Better than Lamp movie. <laughs> I hate Lamp. So this is what we can definitely sure. offer people, aside from being the only two idiots who have ever fallen prey to. <laughs> if we didn't make this clear enough by now, here's what happened. Or what I'm going to assume happened, because yeah. I don't know anything yeah. about Troll 2. Right. We're also the only two people who don't know anything right. about Troll 2. Which so. I think is, is what we can bring to the table. That, yeah, that's what I'm getting <laughs> to. We're the last two people alive who don't know anything about this. Save this recording and remember it forever. They made this movie. It's called Goblins. They didn't think it was marketable, so they named it Troll 2, because Troll is just a word that you can use. It's not a whole lot different legally than naming your movie Two Trolls. Right. Uh, maybe the studio had some kind of rights to it or some. I don't know. Sure. They just called it Troll 2 so that people would see it. Right. We saw it, not for that reason, but we were totally duped by that. And, uh, and thus we became the only victims. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we'll talk about a movie, you know, we talked about Repo or uh, basically half of the movies we've ever covered. We try and talk about a movie in the way that a lot of people haven't. Mm -hmm. or to make it more accessible, or to basically to have a conversation you can only have if you've seen the movie a million times. Right. To really give something to that group of people. Here, there's no way we could do that, because the entire thing about Troll 2, there's a fucking documentary about it. Yeah, there is. I mean, that's probably what made it such a huge thing. There's sure. an internet meme. There's well, there, a... was, there was this boomerang effect. Mm -hmm. It's almost the exact opposite of the trauma story. They make this film, Goblins, then turned Troll 2. It comes out. It's awful. Everybody hates it. Somebody somewhere, drunk in some frat house, bought it on DVD at Walgreens for 99 cents. Hypothetically. I'm going to go internet meme on this, but you go with frat house. That's fine. And somebody just goes, this is hilarious. I'm going to show it to my friends. They watch it, and it just boomerang effect. Right. Suddenly, a total success as right. a film. Death Wish 3 is enjoying the same <laughs> sort it? of weird resurgence. You know, it's the cult story. It's yeah. the room. It's uh, all of these movies we've talked about. So instead, here we are, two people who know nothing about the movie, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, we can remind all of the troll people who are now so immersed in the story. They know the trivia. Sure. They know everything about it. What it was like to once be the person who knew nothing about troll. Right who was finding it for the first time. Who, I mean, a good way to put it is just didn't speak the troll language. You, it, was like, it. it was like we were Italian and didn't <laughs> speak a word of English. Pretty sure you're stealing my material. Oh, I'm sorry. Point. You're going to make me uh, dip into my backup reserve of Danny DeVito, you have to pay the troll toll. So we just found and opened a mysterious file that happens to be labeled Troll 2. Uh -huh. It's this movie. Uh, but it's this not movie. Troll 2. <laughs> <laughs> no. It happens to be labeled uh, Delete Me, What the Fuck. And, and we watched this movie, and with fresh eyes, we're wondering what the hell just happened. Sure. So where do we even begin on this thing? Well, I, you know, it, we could go the safe route, go with maybe the score. Okay, score. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit of the goblin stuff. Let's yeah. say let's say something nice there. Sure. And not goblin spelled backwards, but Argento goblin. A little bit more London after midnight. Yeah. Not sure if anyone is familiar with what that is, uh -huh. but go ahead and look it up or don't. And then uh, maybe and and this third part will overwrite those those other parts. Uh -huh. It's it's kind of you know one part Goblin, one part London After Midnight, fifty seven parts Sega Genesis. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's somewhere absolutely where that, perfect. And one of those Sega Genesis games, by the way, that got buried in a pit in sure. Nevada. Fifty thousand copies of it. Those games. Yeah, and the thing about the music, and also with just the editing in general, is there will be score swells that are just cut off. 
Yeah. There will be scenes where somebody says a line and then there's a pregnant pause on the character as they reflect on the fact that they're about to be eaten. The type of pause that may add several minutes to the yeah. total runtime of well, your film. And then, and then it cuts away. And there are other edits that I just don't ever understand. I could, I could watch the not your grandpa breaking through the mirror. Grandpa shows up with a hatchet reverse mirror breakage oh, scene oh my God. in slow motion. With my eyes in the fucking <laughs> clockwork orange gizmos. Yeah. And never know nope. what happened there. Always a mystery. Forever going to be a mystery. Kind of a little scary. Makes yeah, you jump it did. In the it made me jump. I jumped a few times during this movie. That's not something that often happens yeah. to me in horror films. Sure. I, well, think I think because I expect them to be dull when they're this right. bad. Well, yeah. For me, I was just... Ill- I was normally, when I watch a horror film, I can kind of sense when things are going to be scary. But I didn't know what was going on. Well, yeah. That's, when I was po- when sure. we each had these things that I'm sure everybody does when they watch Troll Two, where they make a snide remark. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, I really couldn't. I don't want to be like Mister Riff Tracks here, sure. but I some of the stuff was just so obvious. Yeah, things that were on my mind had to come out yeah. of my mouth. And and I mean, so essentially, it's when Grandpa's in the mirror, and I want to get to Grandpa at as a whole. Right. But before that. Grandpa's in the mirror and they do that mirror trick, like the invisible sure. Christmas tree sure. mirror trick. Yeah. And Grandpa's talking to the to the to the Holly, the daughter. Yeah. And she freaks out. And I'm thinking, why did he show up in that room? And you just say, Oh, wrong room. Yeah. Right. And then the little boy runs into the room, gets a hold of his grandpa. Grandpa says, if you will. Oh yeah, I, wrong room. It's <laughs> I I'm not familiar with this house yet. I didn't see the names written on the doors. I almost fell off the couch <laughs> laughing. He literally just is not familiar with the house. He, yeah. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to walk in on you right. here. I was looking for the, for right. the little dude. And for me, me. for me, it, it's when they go down to the store and there's only gross milk. Sure. Uh I blame the budget, not the plot. And I see the name of the town and I and I lean over to you in a really dramatic fashion, and I say, "Oh my God, Eric, Nilbog is goblin backwards." And I actually disputed that. I was yeah. like, "Come on, that's a C <laughs> on the end of there. It's not. They at least swapped a letter out or something." Yeah. Not a second fucking right. later, the kid they, looks in the rear view. He mirror. wanders over to the yeah. rear view mirror. <laughs> yeah. As it, why would you? I, it whatever. Was calling him. Not disputing that, and uh, and in fact reveals that. In a dramatic sense to his father, oh my god, dad, Nilbog is goblin backwards. And that's his proof that's for his the rest proof of the That's his proof that they're movie. goblins. That sure. and the shamrock birthmark, or... Scar. I think it's a scar. Mole, scar, whatever the fuck it is. If if anybody Makeup knows... Makeup crust, I think is... <laughs> if anybody knows the connection between goblins and shamrocks, doublefeatureshow at gmail.com. So there is something that makes this movie especially fun. Yeah. We're not just trying to recover and be a little nice to it here. No. There is something about it that it's it's some of the more hilarious Green you know, Frosting. It's uh what 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 is it? It is it something in here that is just worse than everything else? What about it makes this movie so fun? I think it's the fact that it's all that bad. Yeah, that sure, it's not okay. that there's one character who's doing a bad job right or that and all different kinds of bad sure from every direction and i think it just it it's a valiant effort they they made the film it certainly tells a story but the thing is is that the ride that they put you on it just ends up being more fun than they expected. <laughs> sure. You know what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. The, the way they did it, it, there's thought in it. It's, it's just that they didn't realize that it was as funny as it is, but I could imagine certain scenes. I was thinking about this cause I shoot, you know, stupid little videos for glitter mouse all the time. Mm-hmm. The scene where the one friend is dragging his friend in the, planter pot sure. <laughs> sure which i think is probably uh i would say the funniest thing yeah uh, well i'm sitting there going everybody behind the camera is laughing right now right no one looks at this and is thinking this is this is suspenseful yeah right they're going wow this is so funny i i, I we're gonna have to do some really good editing to make this as scary as it needs to be sure and it just never came through as that <laughs> no. it's just you, you, know, you give up it's funny naturally go yeah, for that instead exactly if you had to pick out something, that's the worst, though. Uh-huh. I mean, obviously, these things are all bad in their own delightful little sure. ways. 
But the, the fucking worst thing in the movie. The worst thing in the movie? Um, how about Seance That's a Great Idea? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that's right after the popcorn sex scene. Yeah. <laughs> which, I mean, popcorn sex scene, okay? She brings in this ear of corn, and they're going to eat <laughs> it together to heat it up. And then he starts drowning in popcorn, which is obviously just being flung at the camera or from beyond the camera uh-huh. at the actors. This is uh, what I thought would be the pinnacle of absurdity in the film. Right. You can't possibly ask sure. anyone to buy this. I know the actors aren't taking it seriously. Right. No one in their right mind would ever believe this bullshit. The physics don't line up. You can't heat up corn that way. It's not <laughs> popping One thing is not linked to another. This is a fucking simple parlor trick. How could you? Then they have a seance. (laughs) Then they have a seance. And, you know, no matter how ridiculous the previous scene, seance, that's an instant trump card for absurd. Well, and the thing about the seance is the way it's presented. What are we going to do to get grandpa back? Have a seance? The little kid's eyes (laughs) brighten with excitement as he shouts that his sister's a genius. And they bring back grandpa for the last four minutes of his afterlife. I think it's possible that more people believe you could pop popcorn using a sweaty makeout session than you would do anything but waste all of your family members' time in an awful seance. Sounds like um, Tori, Grant, Jamie, (laughs) Adam, Carrie, and Carrie have their work cut out for them. Would that put Adam and Jamie testing the popcorn myth? Uh, I would probably have Carrie on the popcorn myth. Awkward. So awkward. So the acting seems like it comes from people who have never done it a day in sure, their life. But they really wish they could. If they're, you know, they're more concerned with memorizing the dialogue than... Uh, than looking at each other? Yeah, they're looking at each other, how they recite it, if they're really screaming when they read off. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh my uh, God. And I have never in my fucking life seen more people stare directly in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a rare one that's one sure. people make fun of a lot sure. but doesn't really happen Black Dynamite that often. did it yeah and uh and you know sometimes it can be misconstrued as someone staring into the camera mm-hmm. but this is really you can clearly yeah. see people thinking "Ooh, a camera yeah i'm on film right now <laughs> they're just staring directly into it and there's quite a few of them yeah there are a disappointingly high number of them perhaps yeah but i think the one thing that confuses me most about troll 2 is that grandpa is dead, okay? If you're writing a film where your hero is consistently in the movie, he's the only one that can stop the enemies, why does he have to be dead? Why can't he just be going camping with Oh, them? come on. Two words. Hamster sandwich. I mean, clearly, have you ever seen a double-decker hamster sandwich? You know, I you haven't. You can only find them in the afterlife. That's I why. You're right. You're right. I haven't. I've... You can see them in the background in Beetlejuice when they go to the other world scenes. Outside of that, at no place in cinema you can find the double-decker hamster sandwich. I think it's actually bologna. Probably bologna made from hamsters, though. Regardless, chemicals and poisons for your non-vegetarian body. <laughs> Let's not even touch on the vegetarian <laughs> thing. I mean, I think that speaks for itself. The uh, Once Upon a Time, we talked about something called hamster style, uh-huh. which was quite simply something dropped early in your movie that is there for obviously no point than to become the thing that saves the day right. in the end. It was an orgasmo. And this is uh, maybe several seconds yeah. before, <laughs> before a minute or two, yeah. honestly, before he really needs to use it. Yeah. Oh, what's in the sack? Up, oh, you'll know when you need it. That, that fucking line, right. you'll know when you need it, when the time comes, yeah, blah, sure. blah, blah. The entire premise for Kroll, basically. And he whips out the sandwich, and it somehow allows him to get from one side of the room to the other, (laughs) at which point everyone gathers around the wall. Don't you know you have to believe in goodness or something? Concentrate. Druids, a flash of lightning (laughs) over and over, and they save the day. Yeah, but they don't save the day. So the end of this film does something that boggled both of our minds. And I don't know if this was fun or if this upset me. But what happened is he gets home and you and I both know this film is ending in a cliche or a twist. Yes. Something is going to happen. So we're sitting there. There's a mirror. He's home alone with his weirdest family member. Things. There's whispers. Grandpa might or might not be dead forever. Yeah, forever. Never coming back this time. But it ends with them just eating his mom. Somehow turns out they didn't die. Freeze frame on little kid's face. Fade to black. Yeah. You know, I'm wondering which cliche it'll be. 
I'm cycling through all the things that could be yeah. in my mind. And then I start going, oh, I know Troll 2. Come on, I get Troll 2 now. Mm-hmm. I've, I've sat through the entire movie. I understand this movie. It's going to be all five possible yeah. cliches. It's going to be, you know, a ton of these things at once. It's going to try and top Toxic Avenger. Sure. It's going to say three endings all at once. Fuck that. I'm going to give you seven. Right. Seven cliches that are going to happen. And, uh, and not really any of them. <laughs> Probably the most worthless possible. They could have just added a crane. Yeah. I mean, didn't they learn anything? They learned nothing. Add a fucking crane to the end of your movie, Troll 2. And outside of the name, that's probably the the biggest mistake. You know what would make this a successful movie? Hmm. Instead of Troll 2, Children of the Corn 5. We have a website. It's always doublefeatureshow.com. You can uh, go on the website and, I don't know, there's an interview button. You can see all the interviews. Remember when we used to do interviews? Oh, yeah. That was a big fucking waste of everybody's <laughs> time. Um, you can click that button. You can see all the interviews that uh, that we have done here on the show. You can also send us an email that's doublefeatureshow at gmail.com. I still want to know goblins and shamrocks. If you want to know more about Troll, it's not hard. There's a documentary. There's information all over the internet. You do not have to go far to find Troll trivia. I'm sure we got lots of things wrong. And if anything was, uh, I guess you can email. I was going to request people not just start emailing us Troll facts. But maybe I'd, I'd love that. I don't know. And if I don't, ignore now, because we're just playing a ton of games with mm-hmm. our fucking listeners this year, uh, we have that weird thing that we were doing way back in the beginning oh, of yeah, the year. Oh, yeah, the double journey. Yeah, that's coming up again. So can you maybe explain that briefly? Okay, so, so we're doing this thing where each of your hosts is going on a journey. We're taking you through two separate paths. One is the path of Sylvester Stallone's Rocky, the mm-hmm. character. All six films. And the other trip that we're going on is kind of an exploration of ninja samurai japanese films but it's done in three parts it's the original ninja japanese films the kill bill movies which are the american versions of those films sure and then the japanese versions of kill bill it's a double evolution that will be it's full circle starts and ends in japan and we're doing these both at once yeah because uh really why wouldn't you we're doing these both at once so we sort of understand what the fuck is going on (laughs) And we try and keep people grounded. And, uh, and we're all exploring these things at once. Sure. So the next time we do this, uh, the next episode of the show will be the second Rocky film. Uh-huh. And uh, I believe Sex and Fury. Yeah. Right? We're going to go with Sex and Fury. Now, the Rocky stuff makes more sense, I think, to our audience because it's just Rocky 1, Numbers. 2, 3, 4, whatever. Yeah. Um, Sex and Fury, maybe everybody already knows about this, but, yeah. me. but would, give me a little background on that. Sex and Fury is, it's a female Japanese samurai movie, tons of nudity. There was this thing that happened in Japan called the pink film. I'm intrigued. The basis of it is naked women, as many naked women as possible. And a lot of samurai stuff. Um, Great. There were two films that I was kind of debating lady Snowblood and sex and fury. And I opted for tits over blood. I hope that's okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well then I guess what? Watch more fucking film. Goodbye. <laughs>